Alright, what's going on everybody? Hayden here, and today we have been a pretty unfortunate video, I would say. We got some news to talk about with the Atlanta Hawks. I want to start doing a couple of these videos, like these little like breaking news, kind of like discussion things about big things that are happening with Atlanta and Georgia sports. So getting on topic here, I'm a day late on this um, news coming out, but I still definitely wanted to do this video because it has more of an impact for the whole entire rest of the Hawks season. So yeah, I definitely did want to touch on this and make this video for you guys. Alright, so to get started, Atlanta Hawks cornerstone piece to go alongside with Trey Young. John Collins has been suspended without pay for 25 games on yesterday, November 5th for, for violating the terms of the NBA anti-drug program or the anti-drug policy, whatever you want to call it. Collins tested positive yesterday, November 5th for the growth hormone releasing peptide 2, which is, from what I read up on, a synthetic drug that, that is found to increase your appetite and food intake in healthy male subjects. I don't know really anything about these PEDs or whatever that people are getting suspended for. Pretty much just reading what comes off the internet about these things, so I really don't know anything too much about it, but I do know that it can get you suspended in the NBA. But as of right now, he is going to be serving the full 25-game suspension. So without any kind of problems or any kind of, if he sits out properly from here on out, he will be able to return December 23rd against the Cavaliers. So that's going to be almost two months of Hawks basketball without John Collins, the second best player on the team. So still on the topic of him appealing a thing, he did claim that the uh, that this growth hormone came from a supplement, which in his own quotes, unbeknownst to him, had been contaminated with an illegal component. But at least John has stated that he did understand the impact that this has on the team. And he knows this is going to affect, like, everything that the Hawks have planned for this season so far. And he did say that he's incredibly frustrated and disappointed in himself for putting all of this, all of us in this position. And in a statement that John gave to ESPN, he did apologize and he said, First, I want to apologize to my teammates, the Hawks organization, our fans, partners, and community as a whole for the situation. I kind of already mentioned this, but he did continue in that quote saying, I understand the impact this matter has on what we were trying to achieve together this season, and I'm incredibly frustrated and disappointed in myself for putting all of us in this position. I have always been incredibly careful about what I put in my body, but I took a supplement which, unbeknownst to me, had been contaminated with an illegal component. I plan to appeal my suspension. See, so yeah, I, I kind of mentioned a little bit of that. I just wanted to let you guys know what he fully said and a full, give you guys the full statement that he gave to ESPN. This is something to be expected right here, but... The Hawks president of basketball operations, Travis Schlink, in a statement said that he was disappointed to learn that Collins violated the anti-drug policy, which is expected. You know, obviously the head guy of the team isn't going to be isn't going to be very happy about the situation. And also, head coach Wood Pierce stated that he is going to try to help John get through this, as he knows he's a young guy. He's going to try to help him get through this, not as a player, but as a person off the court. And he did acknowledge that the situation from Collins is going to let has let the team down. The situation really couldn't have come at a worse time as we were just excited for Trey Young to be returning off his injury where he missed two games against the Heat. And now we have to deal with John Collins being out for 25 games until almost the end of December, which is going to be really tough for the Hawks. And he's was really off to a strong start this season, averaging 17 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds, two blocks, one and a half assists, and one steal in 32 minutes a game. And I'm really going to miss for these two months the, uh, you know, the Young, the Collins duo. I'm really curious to see what the Hawks are going to do going forward, what Wood Pierce is going to do going forward. Is who's going to fill in his hole at the four spot on the lineup? They could go with Jabari Parker, you know. He's actually having a pretty good start to the season, averaging 13.8 points, 3.8 rebounds in 22 minutes per game. And he's also shooting his career best 55% from the field so far and 39% and from three. The Hawks could also maybe, you know, slide the rookie DeAndre Hunter to power forward, play a little bit of small ball, I guess you would say. Or or they could go with a 42-year-old in his 22nd year, Vince Carter, at the four. He can also play that role as well. So I'm really curious to see what they do. We did get to see what they did in, last night, though, against the Spurs. They actually started Jabari Parker at the four, so that might be what the Hawks are going to go with. But Lloyd Pierce has actually liked Jabari Parker so far this season coming off the bench. So he could switch it up a little bit, but as of right now, it seems that the Jabari Parker play in a four will probably be the most likely situation to happen. I think that Jabari Parker is probably going to be the best option to play the role that Trey Young is used to John Collins going with, which is like that pick and roll. 
that they always love to do with the alley oops. Obviously, Jabari Parker doesn't have the athleticism like John Collins does, but he's still not a bad option for Trey Young to throw the ball to at the four. Going forward, the Hawks are also going to need someone to step up and play a really big role in a scoring option on things. Obviously, Jabari Parker's had a little bit of a impact on the team, averaging almost 14 points a game. But we're going to need someone like Cam Reddish to get into his groove, get him going a little bit. And hopefully Kevin Herter can come off this minutes restriction within the next month or so and really get him going. He's really going to be a big piece of this season as well. I don't know. The Hawks had a... With Collins in the lineup, the Hawks had a pretty good shot, I thought, of making maybe sliding in late to the eight spot in the playoffs, but who really knows now what can happen. 25 games is a lot, and a lot of things can happen within this time span of two months of basketball. It's going to be a lot more difficult than it already was. And according to an article from The Ringer, the Hawks are now, with this suspension, only giving Atlanta's only getting a 7% shot at making the playoffs, according to 538 projections. So yeah, that's that's not... Not very good numbers to hear. The Hawks did play without John Collins last night against the Spurs. They look pretty good, I mean, you know. But it's going to take a lot out of Trey Young for the Hawks to continue at this pace. Trey Young's going to have to keep up and just go insane. I think right now Trey's averaging high, like 27, 28 points a game on like 9 assists, which are all both top 10 in those categories. Say so right now they're sitting at 3-3. Three and three. Really could be like 5-1 and one if Trey wasn't injured, but, you know, things happen. Like, <laughs> Trey's injury, John Collins getting suspended, just things like this happen in the NBA. Hopefully the Hawks can fight through it and get, and still keep this playoff hope alive. But if not, I mean, it's not the end of the world. The Hawks have a lot of potential and a big, and a bright future going forward. So that's my take on it, I guess. I meant to mention this a little bit earlier when I was talking about the actual suspension. I'm really hoping this is, this this choice of taking these growth hormones was Colin's decision on his own and not something behind the scenes, like someone pushing him to do it. Because if that's the case, that could really lead to a sticky situation and lead to a even bigger case than the NBA already has right now. So yeah, I'm really hoping this is something that John chose to do and not some messy behind the scenes type of situation. I mean, that's all I have for the video. Just wanted to, just wanted to touch on this topic a little bit and... Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. But if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you know, any, got, any friends you got out there. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, it's been Hayden. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody.